<sighs> anyway, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> I'll probably cut all that out. Hey YouTube, I have a really quick video for you today. This is just kind of a video of how I'm using my plasma table these days. But for the last, well, pretty much since Christmas, we had a big Christmas rush on parts and stuff for the plasma table, projects that people wanted for Christmas presents, that kind of stuff. So basically, uh, like since November specifically, I would even say like, call it Halloween, from Halloween until Christmas, we had an insane rush. And uh, we've pretty much just been keeping the CNC table going. Uh, then the COVID hit, and I haven't been going on site hardly at all. Uh, also, if you notice, we got a project going right there. We just got done cutting that out. <sighs> that was a 39 minute runtime cutout right there. That, yeah, that is uh, 36 inches across. So that was absurd. It was 39 minutes. We did learn from doing that, that you should not run this table for 39 minutes straight. <laughs> uh, everything was so hot to the touch. Oh my word. And the metal started warping. We really should have done that in stages, like, you know, 10 minute runs and let stuff cool down. Um, but yeah, 39 minutes was just ridiculous. So that is by far the longest project we have ever done. Before that, we had a project that was 17 minutes, and that was the longest one we've done. So, uh, most of my jobs on the plasma table are seriously under five minutes. So today's project is me running the plasma table. I'm cutting out some gussets for a low boy trailer, um, but this one is also telescoping, and I don't remember the dimensions that it telescopes, but it can telescope out like 20 feet, 23 feet, something like that. Um, so, yeah, it's... It's a really awesome trailer, but all the gussets that go from the main beams in the middle out to the side are completely rusted out. And the customer called me and he said, hey, can you make those gussets? And I said, yeah. I said, but it'll probably be kind of expensive because very seldom do I ever compete with what a factory can do. You know, mass production is completely different than me here in the shop. And I said, I think it's gonna end up costing me 40 bucks a piece. Uh, to build these for you. And he said, do it. I said, really? And he said, yeah. He said, the factory wants $75 a piece. I was like, ah, dang. <laughs> so all I'm doing is loading up the table with a sheet um, and we'll be cutting out pieces and we'll just be bending them in the press. The most time consuming part of this build is actually grinding all the uh, dross off and polishing them up a little bit, making them nice, rounding the corners, that kind of thing. That takes the most time. So anyway, let's fire up the table and you can cut some pieces out. Right. First thing I need to do is find my zero zero. I'm gonna go off of this corner of the sheet over here. Nope, this sheet. I actually have a scrap piece put right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, that to finish off the table. So I'm gonna be starting my cut right here in this corner and be going from there. I'm gonna cut out eight of these pieces. Eight fits on my table pretty darn nice. Um, so I built this table, well, it comes four foot wide was the kit, uh, cause the gantry of this table is what I bought. And then I built the part that everything's sitting down here. Um, so that was, it's four feet wide, but it actually cuts at like 52 inches or accepts. Yeah. I think it'll accept 52 inches or something. So it's much wider than four foot, which is really nice. I was originally just going to make a four foot long table. So I basically have a four by four, but I decided that I had enough room in my garage to go ahead and make it six foot. So it's a four by six foot table. And I am really glad I did that because I use all six feet quite frequently. Um, especially when you start nesting parts and doing whole parts runs and stuff like that, you want to fill a table. So, I kind of wish I would have just bought a four by eight table. Um, but the reason I bought the kit instead is I wanted custom dimensions. Um, so yeah, I'm really wishing I would have just gone with the four by eight and just figured out how to get this thing in here, you know, uh, make room for it. It would have been a lot faster too, cause I wouldn't have spent the time building it. Uh, and of course, now that I have this four by six foot table, I can tell you, I really want a five by 10 table now. Um, 
your table is just never big enough. I can just tell you that right off the bat. One thing I didn't realize would be so handy for is when I built that custom fuel trailer, all those doors and all the trim pieces and you know just that entire hood that covers the generator and the toolbox and the air compressor and all that stuff, all that sheet metal work was super handy to be able to cut that out on this table. Like I hadn't even thought about that when I was looking at a table. So if I could have plopped a five by 10 sheet on there and cut all that stuff out, that would have been really, really nice. I'm gonna grind these pieces up here on the plasma table. I actually have a workbench set up outside that I usually use for grinding, but it's just easier to actually do them right here. And what I'm gonna do is actually pull out a couple of these slats. That way the grinder will fit. So I can do the edge here with the grinder putting the sparks down into the table. And I'll turn the fume exhauster on. And this is actually a two-step process. I'll use one of my grinders with a grinding wheel on it. I'll go around the outside first and try to smooth the edges, kind of round off the corners a little bit. And that'll also get rid of most of the dross. There shouldn't be much dross on these if it cut at the correct speed. And then I'll go back with a flat disc on a different grinder and clean off all the, the top and bottom surface because this plate will be painted by the customer. Once he has installed the trailer, he will actually paint the trailer. And I usually do this as a assembly line type affair. I'll go through and grind all the pieces and stack them up as I go and then come back and sand all the pieces. I have a couple stops set up back here. So I'm going to slide this thing in, bend it. I don't have to worry about mason or anything like that. <laughs> and right so I'll have to bend them the other way to make sure I get that right that's a little tricky sometimes but I just make sure I stack them up on this side of the uh, press with the hole facing this way and then stack them up on the other side of the press with the hole at the other end turn them around so anyway those are all done um, I've already made uh, six of them for them and took them to them just to make sure they fit because we had four that were pretty much kind of the corners of the trailer that we had to do at first. They were a different size than the rest, and I went ahead and took them two of these to make sure that they fit. Um, and then I've got eight more to do on the back of the trailer that are a different dimension than these two. So I'm going to cut one of those out and bend it and take it with me when I take these. And I've also got a bunch of air hose mounts and some light boxes to make. The first one of these I bent I just tried it and it bent horribly. It bent up here in the thin spot, which makes sense because, you know, it wants to bend there first, right? So, so what I do is I take two pieces of cold rolled, half inch square and half by one. So that ends up making a, basically a half inch die like this. So. There. And that also puts the top of this plate right on those pieces. I mean, it's, it's sitting on all of that perfectly. It's amazing how nice those actually fit in there. So now, uh, I've got my stop set up back there, so I just push it in and bend it. And it, it'll hit these bolts when I do this. I need to get longer uh, top dies made 